home charging has come a long way in the past few decades. My first experience of charging my family's first EV, a 1970s Enfield 8000 electric vehicle, involved a charger that was about the size of two carry-on cases and required a small herd of elephants to move it. Thankfully, if you need a dedicated permanent home charger, and let's be clear, many people can do just fine, even on 110 volts with an electrical outlet and the charger that many cars come free with. But for those of us who regularly drive long distances and who are privileged enough to have somewhere to plug in at home, the convenience of having home charging is an enormous time and money saver, even more so with the advent of smart chargers. We recently got sent a new charger to review, one with some interesting features and which has a variant that could be useful for those living in shared or multi-family accommodation. The makers have also just announced the development of a home energy integration system for its family of chargers, so let's dig in and see how it performed. So then why do I need a permanently installed EVSE? That's incidentally the formal name for what we all pretty much call a charger. Technically, I don't. I could at least most of the time get away with a 110 volt level one charger, the free one that came with our car. I could slowly eat the miles available on the Nero EV because the time between my shifts at my other job is too short and the length of that commute is too long for it to be entirely made up overnight by a level one charger, but I could do my full week without running out and I'd refill over the weekend. But it's convenient, plugging into charge doesn't take but a second, and when we have cars on review I'll do some fairly long drives, so being able to top up overnight is just nice. I like leaving with my battery topped up every day. So then, why upgrade our second charger, which is a simple Siemens unit that was in service with Nikki when she replaced her UK Leaf with a used Nissan Leaf in the States back in 2015. When we moved into our house a few years back, she gave it to us and, well, while it served its function well and works just fine, it lacks some of the smarts of more modern chargers. Our Open EVSE, which is our other home charger, can communicate with a system called Home Assistant, which is an open source smart home system. That means you can integrate it with your Alexa, Siri or Google Home. Hey Google, what are you up to right now? Nothing much. I've been composing a little song. It's about daisies. And in the background, I've been sending all your metadata, search and purchase history to my friend Agent Thomas at the FBI. He's so nice. Would you like to hear my song? It also means that if you're reasonably technically savvy, if you have both solar panels or battery storage, or ideally both, with a compatible controller, it can be configured to communicate with those systems and you can, say, limit your charging to hours when the sun shines and you're making your own electricity. It can limit your charging rate so you only use your own electrons or you can, if you wish, set it up so that you can voice control your charger. Also, that particular EVSE was limited to 32 amps, but it's on a circuit with a 50 amp breaker. With increasing numbers of larger, less efficient vehicles coming to market, we've been testing some which have higher battery capacities and, well, that takes a lot of time to charge, so having a more powerful charger is really handy. Okay, so let's look at what comes in the box. When you open the box for the Autel MaxiCharger AC Home, you're met with a large foam block surrounding the charging unit itself. It's well packaged and protected in here, but I'm a little disappointed by the presence of so much non-recyclable material. This could mostly be replaced with cardboard. Slipping the EVSE out from the foam, you see this large heatsink on the back, which we'll talk about a bit later, and the unit we selected for review is the 40 amp NEMA 1450. You can see the molded plug on the short cord there, and the 25 foot, that's about 7.5 meters of cable running to the charging plug. That's pretty common for modern charging units. The unit itself has a clean, simple design, with a front panel having illuminated icons for status indicators. Underneath the charger itself is the mounting bracket and some mounting screws, including drywall anchors. A nice touch. There's some labels included which helps with clearly identifying which breaker goes to your charger. Again, a thoughtful inclusion. All in all, it's neatly packaged and the box is pleasingly free of coatings that might make the cardboard hard to recycle. 
Installation for most people should be a simple case of screwing the mounting bracket to the wall, then slotting the charger onto the bracket. It's held in place by one small torque screw. If you're really concerned with potential theft, I'd trade that out for a more secure type of screw head. Autel suggests around 8 minutes for an install, which seems reasonable. Mine was a little more complex because, as you can see, I first had to remove the old unit, and because I use a NEMA 1450 exterior outlet. Autel recommends externally placed chargers use hardwired installs, but because we get chargers on review and now and then, it's convenient to be able to replace them easily. The unit itself is NEMA 4 rated, which means it's suitable for outside environments where it will be exposed to the weather. However, as you can see, our 1450 outlet is in a specific exterior case that can be closed once it's plugged in. Unfortunately, the input power cable on the unit is very short, so be aware of that when you're considering placement. And you can see I ended up installing it very close to the outlet. Also, the moulded plug is the opposite way up to the plugs we've had on other equipment, necessitating me rotating the socket. Out of the box and without any of the internet connectivity set up, the unit worked as a non-internet connected charger. Plugging in the car worked just fine and electrons flow. You can, should you wish, pop off the front cover and limit the maximum charge current, so you don't have to interact with the smart home features at all. But if you want those smart home features that you've paid for, there's an iOS or Android app. And at the back of the installation guide is a QR code for those who are as lazy as me, and installation was, to be honest, pretty much flawless. It does require registration, and it was kinda awkward that the email option sends you a registration code, which is only valid, according to the app, for one minute. In the email it says 15 minutes, which would be more sensible. I didn't test whether it was one or 15 minutes, because the email arrived really quickly. On the side of the charger, and in the back of the manual, is a second QR code, which once you're registered, allows the app to connect to the charger. You do need to be fairly close to the charger to enable the Bluetooth connection, but once you've connected to the charger via Bluetooth, you can then configure the charger's Wi-Fi connection. Once you're in, you can configure the charger's location, which is necessary if you want to enable Autel's charger sharing, something we'll come back to in a moment. You can configure the maximum charge rate, the cost of electricity, if the charger should start at a scheduled time, separated by weekend and weekdays, whether you need an RFID card to start charging, and if you do, you can add them using the app. You can update the firmware. The firmware update I did took about 8 minutes, during which the app requested I stay close to the charger, and obviously you can start and stop the charger. Incidentally, I opted for the charger with the built-in cord and handle storage, but a second option is also available with separate cord hanger and charging handle storage. That could be particularly useful if your NEMA 1450 or panel aren't located particularly conveniently for the charging inlet on your car. I didn't notice ahead of time that the integrated holster on this unit doesn't adjust, so the handle does stick out at 90 degrees from the unit, which isn't ideal for us, so bear that in mind if you've got a situation like ours where the handle ends up sticking out into the path rather a lot. In testing I found the app was very responsive, and the charger similarly responded quickly to commands issued from the app. Me being me, I like that the app lets you drop in and see the current line voltage and the amps, and the total power that's being used, and the charging handle is slightly rubberized, which feels like it will withstand a fair bit of abuse. Another positive. Okay, so let's get down to a bit more of the reason behind us looking at this particular charger. So first up is the array of connectivity options. The unit does have, as is pretty common, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but it also has a standard RS-485 serial port and a physical RJ45 for wired Ethernet, both of which are not common on consumer-grade equipment, and really useful if you have spotty Wi-Fi in your garage or you want to get more intimate with your charger's activities. As we mentioned, it has an RFID reader, which is handy if you live somewhere where your charger is accessible from the street, or if you are installing it in a multi-user parking lot. Say, you live in condos and you've got permission to put one in there. It allows you to require an RFID card to start charging. The residential variant allows you to register five cards. Unfortunately, at present, it isn't possible to separate electricity usage by user, which would be handy if you live in shared accommodation and want to not have to go Dutch on the charging bills. But I chatted with Autel's rep, and he passed on that suggestion to the engineering team, so it's possible that Autel will, in future, allow you to separate costs by user. 
Well, my quick and dirty test of making the world's smallest charging network using an old RFID card I had lying around works. If you want to use other shared Autel chargers, you'll need an official card, not just some rando card that you register to your home unit. At present, there's no facility for billing in the app, so if you share your charger, you're doing so from the goodness of your heart. Given the potential legal complexities, I don't see payment integration becoming an option in the near future. Similarly, if you do share your Autel charger and want it listed in a charging network other than the one in the Autel charger app, then you'll need to do the legwork yourself, which is a bit of a shame. I'd love to see a tick box in the app that allowed you to say, add it to the plug share list. As it stands, the charger in conjunction with the other Autel Maxi charger, AC home units can perform dynamic load balancing and adaptive load management, which are a lot of fancy words relating to a couple of situations. Adaptive load management is for where you might be at risk of using more power than your house's supply is rated for. We have a 200 amp supply, and were we to charge at the rated maximum for both our chargers, that's 40 amps each, turn on our 30 amp drawing oven, and run the heat pump and the microwave and the dryer, well actually we'd still have a little bit of headroom, but if we lived in a home with a 100 amp supply, we'd have massively exceeded it. This charger has the capability to temporarily monitor the overall current draw to ensure you don't hit that supply ceiling. Similarly, with dynamic load balancing, if you have multiple chargers on the same circuit, then it can also balance charging between those chargers. In this case, avoiding overloading a single circuit, something that's going to become increasingly important as we get more and more EVs on the road. Finally, while we're talking about features, the Maxi Charger AC Home supports the Open Charge Point protocol, which is a means of getting EVSEs from different manufacturers talking and potentially integrating with solar systems and for us, the Mycroft Open Source Home Assistant. If you're interested in that, let us know and when our Mycroft arrives and we start configuring Home Assistant, we'll make a video on it. It'll involve a lot of bleeped swearing, no doubt. Finally, I want to talk about internals. You can pick up a cheap as chips EVSE off Amazon. Other evil hegemonic suppliers of stuff are available. Why spend the extra on this or a juice box or a charger from any of the other good quality charger manufacturers? Well, I haven't stripped mine down, but I've dug around the internet for other folks who have, and what they've revealed is really pleasing. The circuit board is protected by a good quality conformal coating, which stops it degrading and corroding. The circuit board appears to be thoughtfully laid out and uses really good quality components. The main board itself is mounted to that large heatsink that we saw on the back of the unit during the unboxing. Autel may be newer to the charger game, but it is well known in the automotive industry for its high quality diagnostic and testing equipment. And the build quality of this would appear to tie in. Autel recently announced solar integration for the Maxi Charger AC Home, as part of which it's planning to produce its own inverter and storage system, and it is working to allow interoperability with a wide variety of inverter controllers. It's also announced a V2X Home Charger, which would enable bi-directional charging for vehicles like the F-150 Lightning. That would add to the grid balancing mix for charging that we're looking forward to seeing. It does, however, require the VTOX charger, helpfully named the Maxi Charger VTOX DC, which isn't out just yet. It's not something you can do with the Maxi Charger AC Home. So, is it worth a look? Well, I found this a very solid entry into the EVSE market. The unit is well designed, the app is responsive and effective, and I've been pleased to see Autel rolling out new features. It's certainly a worthwhile option to consider if you need home charging. This unit, as tested, runs $559, and the 50 amp hardwire option is $599. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. I'm going to go inside because it's raining. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There's a link in the video description. And if you really liked it, why not leave us a super thanks? It's easy to do and everything you send goes towards helping us make great content. If you haven't already, make sure you've subscribed to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolve Take Two, and give the bell a gentle ring to make sure you're told when our next video goes live. And before I go, check out our regular sponsors at Unspun and Energy Sage. Links are down below. If you use either company and use the relevant codes listed below, you'll be helping us too. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to everyone who makes this channel possible, and that includes everyone who supports us on Patreon and YouTube, as well as those of you who just watch the videos and share them. If you're a supporter at the Charged Up level, you'll see your name right here.
on my right. And if you just joined, we're sorry if your name isn't showing yet. We currently render the list out every week or so, but sometimes our videos are produced a few weeks in advance. Thanks to our self-driving tier supporters, Mike Weeder, Patrick Boyarski, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Michael Goad, Bennett Elder, Andrew Martin, Pedro Muro Pinheiro, Profi Wolf, Chris and Michael Johnson, Tessa in the Gong, Dan Blair, Peter Dillinger, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Kyle Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Regine Fellows, Denny Hyde, Chris Center, and Jim Burness. And of course, out of this world, thanks to our Starman supporters, Anonymous Freak, Andrew Glenn, JP Fagerback, Joe Bresney, John Lyons, Rory Litwin, Kevin Burrowbridge, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnak, Paul Conway, Reggie Watts, Will Graylan, uh, Ian, yes, Ian. Want to be part of the amazing list? You can join Patreon at the link below, hit the join button below to support us on YouTube, or show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofi, or our cool swag store. Links are all down there. And if you're unable to support us financially, just know that watching the video and sharing it really makes a massive difference to how well our videos perform. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving!